So now that we've seen how to name alkanes, it's important to understand that there's more ways that carbon can bond than just have single bonds. And so this is going to lead us into two different types of compounds where we see a double bond or a triple bond that exists between two carbons. So when we end up having two carbons with a double bond in between, this creates a compound that we call an alkene. So an alkene has a carbon-carbon double bond. So what that means is somewhere in the compound there are two carbons that actually have two bonds connecting them. That is what defines an alkene is having that double bond in between carbons. It must be between two carbons. You'll see later there are compounds that have double bonds, but not between carbons. And so that doesn't make them alkenes. When it comes to naming an alkene, what we're going to do is we're going to change the suffix. So we'll still use the same prefix system of meth, eth, prop, but we'll change the suffix to ene -E and to identify them as alkenes. The double bond can also be in many places in a compound, so we need to number the double bond. And the double bond is considered to be a priority group, and so it always gets the lowest number. So what we're going to do now is do some really simple examples so that we can work through the naming rules for alkenes. So this is going to be the first example that we work through. You can see we have our carbons, and between two of the carbons we have a double bond. So if we're going to name this compound, we want to first identify our longest chain of carbons that contains the double bond. It's three carbons, which means we're still going to use that same prefix system. And prop identifies three carbons. Now, because we have this double bond, that is where we're going to use the E-N-E -E ending, and it becomes propene. Now, the other thing we need to do here is number this double bond. And so I just wanted to go through this quick. Again, you want to give it the lowest number. So if you were to number this either way, you'd get one, then two, then three, whereas the opposite direction, you'd get one, then two, then three. You can see using the blue numbering system, it's given me my number one would be the carbon that has the double bond. Going with the green numbers, it would be the number two. We always want the lowest for the double bond, and so this is going to be 1-propene. So a fairly straightforward example so that we can see how, what this would look like. So this will be our next example. So you can see we have our chain of carbons. We have our double bond between two of those carbons. So we want to identify our longest chain with the double bond, and that is going to be 5. So we have some kind of pent. And then because of the double bond, the suffix that we are going to use is en, so pentene. Now, again, we want to think about our numbering system. So we could go 1, 2, 3, 4, and then 5. Whereas if we number the other way, we would go 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And this is a 3. Okay. Now, you can see there going with the black numbers at the top, we get a carbon number two that contains the double bond. And so we're just going to call this 2-pentene. So you can see it's actually pretty similar to naming alkanes. The only difference is we're going to be dealing with numbering. And so I'm going to add one more example, and we'll take a look and see how we would name something like that. Okay, so in these examples, we're going to be working with similar compounds but you can see some of them we're going to work our way up to a branch. And so if we look at this compound at the very top, we want to count our number of carbons. So there is one, two, three, four, five, and then six. Keeping in mind every point and every end of a line counts as a carbon. So we're dealing with some kind of hex, and this has to be a hexene because of the double bond. So then we want to think about, okay, what number? Well, the lowest number you can possibly give it, the very first carbon has that double bond on it. So this has to be one hexene. Now here we're dealing with something a little bit uh, different yet. The backbone of this is really similar. So 
what we want to do is still find our longest chain of carbon. So you'd go one, two, three, four, and if we went down, that's five. One, two, three, four, five, six, if we were to go this way. So that's the path that we want to take. So it's still going to be hex, and because of the double bond, hexene. Now, we want to look at the numbering that we're going to use here. Since this carbon has the double bond, we want it to have the lowest possible number. It's more important that the double bond gets the low number compared to the alkyl group. So even though the alkyl group gets a four, this gets a one, and that's what the most important is we give that the lowest number. So now what we're gonna do is right in front of that name, we're gonna add one to show that the double bond is in the one position. So the number for the double bond is gonna come right before the name of the main chain. The branch that's coming off is a one carbon branch, so that's a methyl. It's in the four position, so we're gonna call this four methyl one hexene. Okay, now I'm just gonna clear this up. This is a double bond that exists in there. It's a little hard to see. So in this example, we have a really similar thing. So we have a branch and a branch, and we still have a six carbon chain. So let's number our carbons, one, two, three, four, five, and six, making sure to give the carbon in the double bond the lowest number. This is still some kind of hexene. So we're dealing with hexene. The double bond is still in the one position, so it is still one hexene. Now we want to name these branches that are coming off of the sides. So we have over here an ethyl and over here a methyl. And if you're going to name this, you need to name alphabetically first. So that means that ethyl is going to become coming at the beginning of the name. So four ethyl two methyl, I kind of ran out of room here, but you get the idea. So 4-ethyl-2-methyl-1-hexene. Now, as well as a compound being able to have a carbon-carbon double bond, you can also have a carbon-carbon triple bond since carbon really just has to have four bonds. So it is very possible that you can have a carbon that bonds to other things, and then in the center between two carbons, actually has a triple bond. This is what we would call an alkyne. So an alkyne contains a carbon-carbon triple bond. And just to show you the, what this looks like, you have your carbon-carbon, a triple bond, and just to show you the angles here, you end up with a 180 degree angle. So an alkyne actually has a completely uh, linear structure with a triple bond in the center. When it comes to naming an alkyne, it really is just the same rules as alkenes. It is find the longest chain of carbons that contains the triple bond, number it so that the alkyne, the triple bond, gets the lowest number, but we're going to change the suffix to show it's an alkyne to Y-N-E. And so let's do some examples so we can work through them and see how we would deal with something that is an alkyne. So we're not even going to start simply because it really is just kind of the same rules as alkenes. We saw those simple examples with alkenes. So let's start with something a little bit more complicated. You see here we have this structure, and I want to point out it's important here to remember you have a linear bond. So often alkynes are written this way because of that linear bond, and what it actually means is there is a carbon right here, a carbon right here at the beginning of that triple bond, a carbon here at the end of that triple bond, and then one at each of these intersections or vertices. So if we're counting our longest chain of carbons, it really is six carbons, and you could have gone this way too. You could have gone up and made this carbon six if you wanted. 
but you have a six carbon chain. So that makes this hex. Now, because we have this triple bond, it's hexine. And we need to number it. And again, the triple bond takes priority and gets the lowest possible number we can give it. So it is going to be two hexine. And just like before, that is going to come right before the name of the, the main chain. So now we just need to name this branch that's up here. And we have a one carbon branch. So we are dealing with a methyl off of the top and it is in the fifth position. So we have five methyl two hexine. And that's all there is to naming this compound. So now that we've named this one, let's go on to one that is even more complex and has a little bit more to it. All right, so we have a much larger molecule here and we're gonna follow those same set of steps that we always follow in order to name it. We wanna find what is the longest chain of carbons in here. So we're just starting, I'm just gonna start here and we'll figure it out. So we go one, two, three. Remember here, there is four, five, six, seven, eight. And even if you went up, still eight. But eight carbons is gonna be your longest chain of carbons. So oct, is going to be the main chain's name. It has that triple bond in it, so it is octine. Now, we need to number this molecule so that we can figure out where to number that um, triple bond. So, let's just take a look at what we could use. So we could start over here and go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. We could also Start over here and go one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Okay, well then, here is the issue. We get four, no matter what. So, and actually, for the moment, doesn't really matter. I can just put four octine, but it's gonna make a huge difference in a moment because I need to actually figure out how to number these branches. So do I wanna have octine in the number four position and a methyl in the six and seven? Or do I wanna have octine in the four position with a methyl at the two and the three? Well, when in doubt, always go with the lowest numbers. So what that means is we are going to go with the black set of numbers at the top. So I'll just get rid of these ones. And that gives us two, three, dimethyl. There's two methyl groups, so we use the dimethyl to show that there's two. We have to number each, so two comma three dash dimethyl for octine. So naming alkenes and alkynes is a little bit more complex than naming uh, just straightforward alkanes, but once you get a handle on the numbering system, it's not that bad. These are what we would call unsaturated hydrocarbons. Hydrogen and carbon, making it a hydrocarbon, unsaturated because we're dealing with a carbon-carbon bond that isn't saturated with hydrogens. Anytime you have a double or triple bond between carbon compounds, that creates an unsaturated carbon compound and, and changes the way that we name it. Hopefully this makes sense, but there is a little bit of a twist to this related to something that we call a stereoisomer. And that's what we'll be taking a look at in our next video. So make sure you check that out and thanks for watching.